So I'm right outside my house and this is uh, almost embarrassing for me but uh, I didn't notice it and suddenly we had some good weather last week and one evening I went out just to sit down and uh, sure enough huge passage of hornets coming and going from the middle of these brambles. <laughs> So I'm going to flick the camera around now and you're not going to believe the size of this Asian hornet's nest. It is a monster. It's pretty difficult to actually appreciate the size of it because I can't clear the brambles because every time I clear them really carefully, one or two keep coming out of me and start spitting at me and start... Um, but it is a massive nest. So let's just put this into context, in context a bit. So, there is my house. So you can see the hole where they're going in from. That's it there. It's one heck of a big nest. It is a monster. That's the Pashas of Hornets. So, and there's my house. How embarrassing is that? But you just don't know. And you know what? Hardly any hornets on my bees. And I'll show you what something else. So we'll come just a few meters away, walk along here. Excuse the tractors. Farmers doing their work for the evening. And here we have another nest. This one isn't quite so big. I don't know if you can see it in there. There it is. And as soon as I started cutting the brambles out, they all came pouring out. This one is probably a third of the size of that one other one over there. There you go. So that one nest is there, right by the side of the road. The other nest is just in that pile of brambles there. So I've had the commune that came up this morning. They've seen the nest themselves. They're going to destroy them next week, free of charge, which is wonderful, good service. But uh, I'm going to try and clear around a little bit so they can get better access because, as usual, it's in brambles and it's, uh, it's difficult to get them. But they've got a long lancers that can just poke in. You only need to squirt a tiny bit of the chemical in. It's just a powder, but that'll kill it in a few days. The thing is, they're so aggressive. Literally, you go up to them, they all pour out the nest. I uh, was cutting some brambles away from it last night. Not a lot, just a few, just literally in the middle of that pile you can see. I'll zoom in in a minute when I flip the camera around. I um, was cutting some brambles back and they basically just came at me and I didn't have my bee suit on. So it just shows you how careful you've got to be. I got stung on the head, just about there. And I can tell you what, the pain was unbelievable, much more than a bee sting. And it's still, when I touch my scalp now, it's still really tender there, but it's, it's not too bad. I don't react luckily, but the pain was incredible. So I've got one nest there and the other nest is just further back in that pile, just behind the tip of that, just in front of the tip of that tree in line with that. So these are the two, but it's just to say, don't ever try and deal with these on your own unless you've got, if you wanted to use your bee suit, you can, but you need to wear like a lot of layers underneath the bee suit and you need to have at least two or three mil around the outside of your body, but you're better off just not doing it and get someone in professional in to do it. Because if you don't, you will get stung and they are ferocious attackers. That's the, that's the issue here. They're not like common hornets where if you disturb a nest, you might get a sting if you're unlucky. With Asian hornets, if you disturb a nest, they are prolific and you get stung by 50 hornets instantly and they'll keep stinging. So you've got the extra venom, and if you are allergic, where you might not have got stung before, if you are allergic, you're going to get a massive dose and you will die if you're allergic. There's no doubt about it. That's why people die in France all the time and in Europe, because they're just prolific and they're just so defensive. And the minute, the minute, the second that you disturb the nest, they are on you. 
So be warned, don't touch it, get someone else to do it who knows what they're doing, who's got the right suit, that's the thing. They are just a little shit, honestly. Here we are back in the apiary, just doing a few last minute things before I go away next week. But I just wanted to show you this, that what I've done is the hive that's blue on the left, I've harvested a queen from. And the one on the right is still queen right, so the one on the left is queenless. I'm going to combine that with the one on the right. The reason why is because I want the two of them to be united for the winter, like all the rest over there. They need a minimum of two bodies of, of honey for the winter. But look how good they are, look at this. Every single one is full of honey. Look at that, those bees are just gorgeous. You can see these are darker bees and these are gonna be put on top of this one. These are actually a really nice quality queen. You can see how beautiful they are. But look at those frames. They're all completely packed. You could, that could not be better and I can't even, when I, well, I can lift it up, when I lift it up, that is so heavy, it's unbelievable. And that's what I want. But they still need two of those. So perfectly, this one here was queenless. So I harvested that queen from the blue one and she's now under there in a pushing cage. But I couldn't put her under a pushing cage because that one had no brood, so I have harvested a frame of brood from that one. So it's taken four hives here to achieve what I wanted, but they're all now sorted. So that one there that the, that the frame of brood came from, that's had the frame from here, so they haven't lost any resources. They don't need brood, that's full of bees, that one. This one needed the bees and hatching brood because it was almost becoming laying workers, but it's not quite there yet. And those, those bees that are hatching are now gonna flood that with with the brood pheromone and the nurse bees will all be rebalancing the colony quickly before I release that queen. This one will be combined with that one so that then those resources on the left aren't wasted and they're used for the colony on the right and the bees are as well so that everyone wins and I get a colony back that had a queen that was queenless. That's why Mini Plus is good for me. This is what you can do this time of year. So this is how I combine my two colonies. This one on the right is obviously still queen right and that's gonna take this top section. So what I do is I put a sheet of newspaper on, I make a few holes in it like that, and then basically I lift the blue one over, but I'll have to stop that and stop the film a second and just lift it over because it weighs quite a lot. So what I've done is the top box has gone on, there's a sheet of newspaper between the two, and now you move that colony to the middle position, the middle of where the two were, and the bees soon reorientate. Look, they're fanning, they're moving in, but this colony on top, there'll be some bees up there for a while, but by tomorrow, they'll all work their way back in and these, they'll start eating through the newspaper. And tomorrow morning, I'll come down and you'll see little shreds of newspaper all around the hive here. These nurse bees that fell out when I was trying to find the queen, they can now walk up here and join the rest of them. And it's as though nothing's changed. They still think they're one colony, they're not stressed. There's still one queen in that bottom section and the top section is now gonna be joined to the two. It's so simple, this. This is why I love Mini Plus. And this is one of the main reasons, because you can do this at the end of the year and you can harvest queens late. You can use these queens as a resource and then you basically combine the bodies so you're not wasting the rest of the resources. The queen is one resource, the bees and the, and the body and all the material in it, the honey, everything else that stores, it can be made into, in, all into one colony. And then they're happy like that. It works really well. Simple thing, but once you learn that, you can do so much with your bees. You can combine, you can cut them in half, you can make, you can split them again in the spring. This is what I'll do. This spring they'll build up and I'll break them all down again. And, and two colonies are that full in the spring. If, if I can keep them in before they swarm, that'll give maybe 10, 10 new colonies if you're careful with it. It's all can be done. That's it now for the end of the season, really. There'll be just a few checks to do, but every colony I've looked at now weighs a ton, which is fantastic. The feed is on top. There's still feed in there. I've left this on because they probably will take that down because now there's two colonies together. So um, I, could, I could put another body on top of that because I've got some other frames in there to, use, to finish using up. So I'll see how that is in a couple of days just to use those last frames up. But uh, it, they've got enough now. They are completely full and uh, they'll be, they'll be, it'll be difficult to find any more space to be honest. But uh, we're getting to the end now where there's nothing more you can any, really do. If you've got a colony that's queenless and you've got no queen spare, you just have to shake out the bees and then give, that, give the resources that hive has to the one next door. Simple efficiency and good use of the resources before the end of the year. You do not want to have frames that are sitting there over the winter with no bees on them or with just a few bees dying and the wax moth gets in and then the mice are attracted. I know you put mice excluders up, but you do not want that. It's just good to just get it all together and get it sorted before the winter. 
still glorious weather. Next week, it's good till Tuesday, and then that's it. But I've just shaken, the, when I shook that frame out there to get that frame of brood, and it wasn't a full frame, by the way, as you'd imagine, it wasn't a full frame of brood, I, that the ivy and the nectar in it was unbelievable. It was absolutely swimming in nectar, and a sweet, sticky nectar from the ivy, which is really good. Look at those bees all fanning there. Just to add, this is the same day I filmed the Asian hornets up the road, literally that way, behind that oak tree, the tall tree there, they're about another 50 meters behind my house up there. You can see my house, if I go back, just to prove I'm not talking porkies. Well, you can't actually, but the, my house is just behind that. You can see the top of it over there. My house is behind that. And the, do you see any Asian hornets in front of my hives? And yet there's two enormous nests. These are my hives. Look, where's the Asian hornets? There isn't any, you know? Where are they? Not a single one anywhere. Probably because now they're on the ivy and they're feeding on the ivy. I do understand that and I agree with that. But even when there was no ivy in flower, there wasn't any, hardly any hornets here. It just shows you hornets are diversified and they're eating them of a wider range of insects.